What is up? Welcome to another episode of the Physique Development Podcast. Sue and I are going to have a round of overrated or underrated on very popular fitness topics, things like the cold plunge, things like lifting straps, or should the gym really be your therapy? If you have not yet, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Leave us a comment if you agree or disagree with some of the opinions that we share with you today, and we'll see you on the inside. What are your thoughts on fireworks? I have lots of thoughts on fireworks. First, not that cool. They're mid, honestly. Pretty mid. Unless you have kids, then I can foresee it being real fun. But I think that there should be rules in place on when people can set off fireworks. We don't need it the whole entire week. We need it one day, and there needs to be a time limit because people were putting off fireworks last night, not the 4th of July, let me tell you, till like 11 p.m., loud fireworks constantly. Constantly? So, I just, I'm, I'm not, I think that they're overhyped. Well, I mean, they are, it, it's, it's kind of like Halloween costumes. Like you could look at Halloween costumes and be like, that is a waste of money, but people enjoy Halloween. And so they spend a lot of money to get their costumes and all that stuff. Same thing goes for fireworks. People spend a lot of money on fireworks. Um, I think it's very overhyped as well. They've never been my favorite thing in the world. I could see young kids, they find it cool as a parent. I probably would enjoy that. But outside of that, not a fan. I think my favorite thing is when people see fireworks and then they're just recording the fireworks. And it's like, are you going to go back and watch that on your phone? What is the reason that you are recording the fireworks right now? To put it on their Instagram story. I just, I can't. Fireworks are not it for me. In the spirit of talking about things that are largely overrated, like fireworks, we thought it would be fun to go into some fitness topics and decide if we think that they are overrated or underrated. I am ready. What is the first topic that we are looking at? Do you think that taking videos in the gym is overrated or underrated? I find this to be underrated. The reason being is that I think more often people find this to be something that is for posting it on social media or whatever the case may be, but the value in post or not necessarily posting, but the value of recording yourself performing the exercise is so helpful because you may feel that you're getting to a specific range of motion um, in your mind. And when you look at the video, it's like, oh, I'm not actually getting that far into the movement or that far into the squat or whatever it is, uh, as well as you may feel as though that you reached a point of failure within a particular weight. And when you look at the video, you realize, oh man, I had two or three reps left, whereas my mind was telling me that I was completely done. And so it allows for you to have a review process of the exercises that you're performing. And I think that it also is something where now gyms are not even allowing people to film because people have abused something so great and started to film other people doing things wrong and making fun of them on social media. And so then these gyms have to be like no filming at all. And it's really taking away from a very valuable tool that everyone has at their disposal uh, for their training. I agree. I think that it is largely underrated and people just don't utilize it enough in the way that they can benefit exactly the reasons that you laid out. And I know that if your gym does allow it, I used to be very self-conscious of filming myself because I didn't want someone to think that I thought that I was all that and didn't want someone to think that I thought I knew everything and that's why I was filming myself or that I was hot shit. But I also didn't want to let other people deter me from reaching my goals and being able to truly personally review my videos and have a coach review them is invaluable in my opinion. And we've seen it time and time again. And so I always urge anyone, if you are allowed to film in your gym, to film yourself because it can lead to so many more gains and just so much much better execution of your exercises. All right, our full day of eating videos, underrated or overrated? 
This one is a, a tweener for me because I think the overrated side is going to be the short form content that you see now of look at my abs. This is what I ate in a day. And basically insinuating of if you eat this, you're going to look like me type situation. Um, so I, that is overrated. I think that the underrated is getting to have a viewpoint of just how someone goes through their day of accomplishing, getting to 150 grams of protein, 200 grams of protein, especially if you're someone who's new to tracking and trying to find either recipe ideas or combinations of foods that get you to specific allotments. So I find it to be a great resource, but it is overrated in in the way of comparison and people being like, well, she eats this much food and she's this lean, so I should be able to eat that much food and be that lean or whatever the case may be. And so I think that it's a, a tweener. You know, this is going to be not as fun because I feel like we agree on a lot of these topics because I'm right there with you. Of I see such a benefit, but I also see the negative side of far too many people taking it literally where I have always taken it as this is great for meal ideas. This is great to be able to have some inspiration on what I eat. And just because when someone, whether it's someone you follow on Instagram or a fitness coach, they talk about their meals and talk about how you can really enjoy them and making them work for you. I think seeing it in motion, I'm a very visual learner. And so being able to see someone's food is so, so helpful for me. But I do feel like people take it completely the wrong direction. And they, a lot of people understand when they're posting it, how deceiving it can be. And I've always tried to not make it of here's my physique. Now here's what I eat of just being able to showcase here are some great meal ideas, or these are the meals that I might eat while I'm eating out or eating at home so someone else can benefit from it and hopefully not facilitate some of those negative sides. Yeah, the tough part with the short form content is that people see that first uh, bicep or ab flex at the beginning as this sense of validity of you should, you see how great I look, you should definitely follow this. And so the short form content has not been helpful on that side of things. Do you think that Essentia water is overrated or underrated? <laughs> Severely underrated. <laughs> Severely underrated. Um, it's the greatest water of all time. And so with that being the case, um, everyone should be drinking it for the betterment of their life as well as the quality of the bottle itself. When you hold on to it, you can tell that you're holding on to just, a, it's not, as soon as you grab it, it's not squishing and crunkling and crunkling, new word. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not make it, and then the lid is is a quality spinning amount when you take it off. You know those really cheap water bottles where it's just like one twist and it's off. The Essentia bottle is a solid two to three spins before it comes off, and so it's secure on the lid. I mean, I can't say enough good things about Essentia. At some point, they're going to sponsor the podcast, and it's <laughs> going to be such a special moment for you all and myself <laughs> and the two of us to experience having Essentia as the podcast sponsor. But today is not that day. It would have been great to be roll right into it. I ad. know that sort of been great <laughs> ad space. Essentia, where are you? <laughs> Maybe they're watching. Um, but what are your thoughts? I, I guess one thing that I guess I didn't expect going into our marriage is how passionate you are about water and the quality of water. But I have learned time and time again that quality means a ton to you. So you are going to find even something as simple as the best water bottle for you to be able to drink out of. So I don't think that it's necessarily under or overrated. I think that it is what it is. That's how I feel about water. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Do you think creatine is overrated or underrated? I'm going to put this in slightly underrated and mostly adequately rated because I think that there are a myriad of, of benefits, but they're not going to be benefits that you're necessarily feeling, right? It's, it's something that um, you're going to experience over the long haul of, I consistently took five grams a day for a year or two years and I saw these strength strides or these improvements in my training performance, my, my cognitive benefits and those different factors. And so I would say that it's adequately rated, if not slightly underrated. 
It's always interesting because obviously we're looking at it in the realm of how much we hear about something or see about something, but it's wild to see that a large majority of, let's say, America doesn't know about creatine, but in our pocket of the fitness space, then it is something that's talked about a ton, which I think it's very beneficial that it's talked about because supplements can be so confusing and unsure if you should use something or shouldn't use something, and creatine is one of the most recent research supplements. So I'm glad that it is talked about. It's a very safe supplement. Uh, But that actually leads me into one of the other things. I'm wondering if you think it's overrated or underrated. And that's the supplement of a greens powder. I would put greens powder in probably the overrated category. Reason being for that is that I think that there's a little bit too much value being placed on these powders to give you energy and to fix your digestion and provide you with all the micronutrients that you need and so on and so forth. And so do I think that there's benefit to the ingredients and the quantity of the ingredients that are being supplied in some of these greens powders? Sure. I think that there's some immune function benefit, some digestive benefit and so on, but I don't think that it's this must have thing that you have to have in your protocols or you're not going to have good digestion. You're not going to have good energy. And so I think that that would be overrated in the you know general context. A hundred percent agree. I think it is vastly overrated. And especially if you're on TikTok or regularly listen to podcasts, you really can't make it through without seeing an ad for a green supplement and being able to talk about how it cured everything wrong in that person's life, where I think that they definitely can be beneficial, but I would even clump that in as a luxury supplement of something that if you can add it to your regimen or you want to, you enjoy it, go for it. But it's definitely not on the core line of supplements that I would say these are the ones that I would suggest that you get first. I would say with the the greens powders, it's something where if you're not eating well, you're not taking care of your body within your sleep and those different factors, and you implement a greens powder, I bet you do feel better. Like I bet it's a pretty instantaneous, like, oh, like, and, and it's also a easy way of I'm doing something good. Mm -hmm. Like I'm doing something good for my body. And so I think that there's a placebo effect on that side, but also maybe (laughs) it could be the only vitamins and minerals and and micronutrients that that person's getting in for the day. And so then they're like, I am the biggest athletic greens fan or whatever (laughs) the product is, when in reality, they could just do better with their daily intake and have even greater benefit. Um, But that would take effort and that would take time and those things. And if that's your entry level, and if that's something you are doing to make a change, I'm all for it. I'm definitely not sitting here telling you like, you should just eat better food. If you're making that change, go for it. But definitely don't put all of your eggs in one basket of this will change my entire life. Now, something I know that you have been interested in, so I am interested to hear if you think it's overrated or underrated, ice baths and or cold plunges. I would put this in the overrated category. Reason being for that is that we have seen from the literature that it is going to be have have some negative effects from a hypertrophy standpoint. And majority of the people who are listening to this podcast are going to have an intent of improving body composition, improving muscle density, and those different factors. And so with that being your North Star goal, cold plunges and ice baths are probably not the best thing for you. Now, am I on board for the mental toughness side of sitting through an ice bath and and those different factors? Absolutely. If it's part of your morning routine and, and you're trying to put yourself in something that's challenging and uncomfortable to start your day, to have something that you conquer, uh, that's, that initiates kind of a good momentum. I'm on board for that. But when we look at the research itself and especially, uh, like cold exposure following resistance Mm -hmm. training, that's it's going to be a time in which we don't want to utilize it. So I think that there is context in which it is beneficial from the mental side of things. Um, but outside of that small window, I would say that it's overrated. I'm with you on that. And I think that it has been so popular recently that it feels even more overrated because again, you can't 
go too long without seeing someone talk about how they're doing a cold plunge or an ice bath. But I also have clients that do things like the cold showers in the morning and they absolutely love them. It sets their day up for success. So I think that within a lot of these aspects, really being able to ask yourself, why am I doing it? Because I ask that question to clients all of the time. If they come to me and let's say they're doing HIT classes or a bunch of cycle classes or cold plunge, whatever it may be, I ask them, what's your intent or why are you doing this? And sometimes they can't answer why. They just think that they should be doing it. So I think being able to really look inward and figure out why am I doing this thing? And if it's because I think it's going to give me all of these benefits that have shown in research really aren't going to come through, then maybe we cut that out. But if it's because it's a part of my routine that I enjoy and it allows me to be a better person each day, then freaking keep that in and keep doing it. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. How do you feel about 75 hard? This is a unique one. I'm going to put this, and I may surprise you with this, but I'm going to put this in the overrated category. Reason being is because I think that many people already struggle with the all or nothing mindset and the all or nothing mindset being a big deterrent for them getting their health in check already. And so utilizing the 75 hard, which is a, I mean, a very challenging 75 days. And it is driving home the all or nothing mindset to where it you could go from doing nothing for your health to thereafter implementing all the things within 75 hard and doing that for basically two and a half months is what it ends up being. And so then you're you're not creating a lifestyle around these things. You're going to the extremes of these different factors. And I think that there are tidbits that you can continue to excel in um, past the this, this 75 days. But I also think that there are tidbits that you can't, like the two workouts a day type situation. That's not going to be sustainable for the gr- vast majority of people. Are there people that can do it? I'm sure. I'm not one of them. And I don't desire to be one of them. Um, But I I would say that it is overrated in the sense of it. It's not pushing the person forward for their life. It's pushing them forward for that instantaneous moment. And maybe that instantaneous moment catapults them to be able to have something sustainable in the future. Like that could be the outcome. But I would say that that's the very small amount of people are able to make that happen where the majority of the people that are doing it crush it for the 75 days or they fall off and and don't even get it done, but they crush it for the 75 days and then they're just back to where they were or like the habits that they had prior to the 75 hard. And so, and I feel, I, I almost feel like soft in answering it this way, right? Because it's like, no, you should be hardcore and should be able to do this. And then it enhances your life and so on and so forth. But, um, also having 75 days in a row without one mistake and if you make one mistake on day 74, you have to restart is a is an interesting way of navigating through mistakes and, and giving feedback. Because one thing that I have learned in, in the eight years of, of coaching individuals that basically scolding someone and being like, you have failed, restart when they make a single mistake and that one mistake in 75 hard could be that you didn't read 10 pages of a book that day because your kid got sick and you got called into work early and X, Y, and Z happened. You just didn't get to read the the 10 pages of the book. Um, Like that's just not a good way of giving feedback. And it's not a good way for someone to be speaking to themselves. I think that there are times to be hard on yourself and and to um, speak to yourself in a way of like, no, you need to toughen up. You need to do better with this. But in that particular scenario, like that mom, dad, whoever it is, they shouldn't have to restart the whole challenge for not getting to read those 10 pages. It's just how the day happened. Um, and so I, that's just like a, an example, but I, I think that the the context in which it being so black and white 
doesn't lend to improved habits for the long term. And that is the thing that everyone actually wants to change, whether that is what they want to admit at that time or not, for them to have the health that they desire, their habits and their lifestyle have to you know, be in alignment with that. It's just not maintainable or sustainable. And that's something that's deeply rooted within our coaching. So that's why I feel like I have a struggle with even enforcing any bit of it, even though I think that the individual aspects of the challenge are really positive things like getting outside each day, reading a book, being able to work out. I think all of those are extremely positive things to do, but it comes into your life and your circumstance are not taken into equation. And if you are someone that has struggled with that all or nothing, it just pushes that I cannot be successful unless I go all in. And you can still go all in as far as your effort, but you're not going to be perfect each and every day. And that's completely okay. But again, it's a question of why am I doing this? Am I doing it because I've already locked down a lot of habits within fitness and I want to push myself mentally? could be a positive experience for you. Am I doing it because I want to lose 20 pounds in 75 days and look snatched for a trip I'm going on? Will you have the most positive experience and get the most out of that experience? Probably not. So I think that it can have a positive impact, and I understand his thought process within putting everything out for the 75 hard. But I think that as a coach, I just see the other side so often of people running themselves into the ground, doing way too much and not understanding the power of rest, rest days and recovery. And that's where I'm coming from. The one category of individuals I think it's perfect for would be a male who is getting into their first job out of college who doesn't have a significant other or they're coming off of a hard breakup. I find this to be something that would be, and they're trying to transition out of college partying, having all this, uh, you know, spending a lot of money uh, at the bars every weekend, what have you. And then they transition into this. It's going to two extremes, but I think that it shows that person of like how much they can invest in themselves, how much better they can be for themselves. And so I, I, I do think that there are, populations of people who this really aligns with, with where they're at in their life. But I would say the vast majority of people are not in those categories. Now, how do you feel about the Peloton? I know that you are also an owner of the Peloton. Is this overrated or underrated? Everything under this roof is mutually owned between the two of us. (laughs) So I own a Peloton, you own a Peloton. Um, (laughs) I would say, gosh, this is hard because I enjoy the Peloton. The thing with the Peloton is that I am painfully competitive. And so with that leaderboard, I want to win. And I do not have the cycling skill to win against people who do it every day, multiple times a day, uh, have a lot of experience. But if I see that they have a higher score than me, I'm shooting for that highest score. And so I think that the, the Peloton is maybe adequately rated. It's not the 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 cream of the crop if you will it's not like going to be this saving grace for you but it is nice to have a a lead class on the 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 bike to be able to go through a sequence of greater intensity lower intensity whatever the class may be and so i find it to be useful um do i love using it no would i prefer to be riding a bike outside yes um have i ever gone to like a cycle bar no why did i get the peloton hayden told me to and it was fun to do it like with a friend and and do different rides together and maybe as he gets everything out of storage when he's when they've moved and all that stuff maybe i get back into it but that was kind of the driving force for me it just hurt my butt too much. Yeah, the seat's not very comfortable. <laughs> the seat was not very comfortable at all. And I've been to cycle classes. I've just never been the biggest fan of a stationary bike. And I got no problem admitting that. It's some people's love of their life. And I'm so happy that that's the case for you. But for me, it's just not. Cycling, uh, my legs get so inflamed and my butt hurts and it's just not where I find joy. I'd much rather go for a walk than go for a stationary bike ride. But we 
the stationary bike was one of the first pieces of cardio equipment I ever owned because it was the one that could fit into our apartment. And I wanted to be able to have some sort of active equipment at home. So I think that the whole Peloton brand and the app is so good. And they have so many different options of now they have the treadmill, but they also have yoga and a few different things that you get with the membership. So I think that really just looking at how it fits into your life. And I know I've already said that a few times, but with so many of these topics or these things like a Peloton, you have to really take some time and see how it does fit into your life or your routine or your likes and dislikes. The reason I never personally was like, I want a Peloton is because I knew I didn't love riding the stationary bike. So it probably wasn't going to be the best option for me. And so I think that it is, especially now, pretty adequately rated. I feel like a few years ago, it was extremely overhyped, but I don't know if I would say it was overrated. Maybe just overhyped. It was, it was in a hype era. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I lost a, a decent bit of money uh, on <laughs> Peloton stock. Uh, in that time frame, bought bought early and thought I was going to ride a wave and rode the wave for far too long, and that was a you know learning lesson on my end. How do you feel about using the gym as therapy? This is overrated to me. The reason I say that is because if we are in a place of of greater stress on our body, and um, going to the gym is more stress on our body, that. Yes, it is going to give us a, the endorphins and those different things, but it is not going to really uh, address the thing that needs to be taken care of. It's going to give us an escape for an, a period of time, but it's not going to be getting to the root. And so I find it, and this is something that I felt the gym was for me being therapeutic and the physical activity and those different things. Um but I, I think that it just continues to allow for you to brush things under the rug and instead of addressing whatever the thing is that needs to be addressed, whether that be within your mental health, whether that be within um, conversations with a, a friend, a colleague, your spouse, whatever whatever the situation may be. Um, so I find it to be obviously very useful for your physical health, very uh, useful to your overall mental health. But if we're we're saying that this is my source of therapy, I don't need to go see a therapist because I have this is my therapy. That is problematic and overrated. Lifting and training is definitely a release, but why I think a lot of people say it's their therapy is because it might be the only alone time that they're getting in a day. And I think alone time can be very therapeutic, and I think training can be therapeutic, but I do not think that training can substitute therapy tit for tat. Here's a good one. Do you think that Nash bars are overrated or underrated? They're the most underrated bar on the market. (laughs) Wow. Why are they not in every Kroger? (laughs) Why are they not in every Sprouts? Why are they not in every Whole Foods? That's my real question. They should be world freaking wide. They're the best bars I've ever had. (laughs) They are the best bars I've ever had, but they actually talk on their website about why they're not in all of those places is because the- Everyone's stupid. (laughs) Everyone is stupid, but the distribution and what it would take to be able to scale at that price, they wouldn't be able to have the same quality ingredients and have the same quality assurance to get to that place. This sounds like some crowdfunding is necessary. (laughs) All right, everyone. I need your help. I need your help. This is not my company and I have not run this by the owners, (laughs) but we need help because this needs to be in everyone's hands at their local grocery store. It's the best protein bar on the market. It's not even, it's not even close. It's not even close. So it sounds like they need better equipment or (laughs) Easier distribution of some sort. So they need to go on Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah. Shark Tank. There, <laughs> I have an application for you. <laughs> well, how do you feel about midday squares? I would say that midday squares are more popular than Nash bars. Like midday squares are at Target, aren't they? Mm-hmm. So they they've they found their way to distribute and get it into the hands of of the good people. You know. So I would put them in the adequately ranked or slightly underrated category. I mean, they have some sort of addictive property to them. There's no question. They may be going to prison sooner (laughs) rather than later, just because they may be found out that they've got something that they shouldn't have in there because it tastes that good. Uh, I, I could always eat more than one. 
Always. No, <laughs> I think that two. It should the serving size should, should say be two. two. Yeah, two. One is is ridiculous. I literally eat one. I'm like, that was so good. I want another. Yeah, it's quite the expensive snack when you have two at a time too, though. So you got to keep that in mind. <laughs> or when we each have one a day every single day. Well, since this diet started, I've really been unfortunate and not had those in all that much. Oh my gosh. Do you think intermittent fasting? is overrated or underrated? I am going to put this in the overrated category for the sheer fact of it being the the saving grace to everyone's fat loss when they do it. Like when when someone imp, imp, implements it and they're like, oh my gosh, I started intermittent fasting and I, I lost all this weight. And it's like, well, you really just closed the window of time in which you could consume. And for you to match the same amount of calories that you were consuming over your entire day um, would have been very difficult. And so now that you've cut your eating window basically in half, if not even less than that, um, you're just eating less calories. Thus, you are feeling better with your digestion. Um, you're losing body fat because of the caloric intake that you have. And it's not necessarily that because you only ate in this window of time is the reason that you lost the body fat, but more so because the lower total calories that you were consuming. I think it's 100% overrated because it, it's either that they're eating less calories or same thing, but they're just cutting out one full meal. And really think a lot of times within intermittent fasting, it's ending earlier in the evening. So that takes away a lot of nighttime snacking or maybe drinking that might even lead to more snacking. And the digestion aspect alone, if you were to cut off your eating in time to fully digest it to go to sleep, which is what a lot of people, myself included, run into is eating too close to bedtime and really causing their digestion to be a muck as a whole, then that's intermittent fasting. I think that it can hold a place if it fits in your schedule and it makes sense for your schedule. But again, I'm always looking at what's sustainable or what's realistic. And anytime that a client has asked, oh, should I do intermittent fasting? Should I, should I maybe try and change my food window? It's like, does that work for you? Does that work for your lifestyle? Is that when you eat with loved ones? Is that taking away and making your life more restrictive for absolutely no reason other than you think that it's going to solve all of your issues? So I think that it is massively overrated. And I think that there's multiple camps that we're speaking to. I'll, I'll give an example is that I have a, a business owner that I work with that he fasts until the workday is over. And so then he's eating well, his workday ends at three. And so then he's eating from three to 8 PM. So he has this five hour eating window. It's pretty short. He has three meals in that time frame. It's a lot of calories in those three meals. But when he's at work, it's just easier for him, water and coffee, and just be able to go through the day. And is that the best situation to put on maximal amounts of muscle tissue? No. But does it work for his lifestyle as well as the calorie intake that he wants to have? Yes and yes. And so those like in that setting where his number one priority is taking care of his health, um, running his business efficiently and having very efficient days, those things are all checked off the list with this protocol in place. But let's say that we have someone who is wanting to become an IFBB pro is going that route going to be the best thing for their goal. No, like they need to have more consistent feedings of protein and, and all these different factors in place to maximize the opportunity of putting on muscle tissue to recover from their previous training session and those different factors. And so it's not a one size fits all uh, approach and you have to look at it in its entire context when, when applying these different things. It is summertime and with summer comes vacations and needing to look like a smoke show at the beach. And that is probably you and wanting to get in the best shape of your life. With Physique Development, our one-on-one -on -one coaching is going to do that for you. So head over to physiquedevelopment.com and inquire to work with one of our coaches. Now, how do you feel about training to failure? Is that overrated or underrated? I could go back and forth on this one. This is another one that's so painfully context dependent because there's an audience of people who are listening that go balls to the wall for their training and have no ability to recover. And so for that audience, I'm going to say it's overrated, like cool your jets and, right. and have yeah <laughs> more consistency to the recovery of your training. Then there's an audience of people who are listening that are 
not training hard enough and need to understand that the value of them training near failure is is underrated and they need to train harder and and push themselves and they're so much more capable than they're allowing themselves to see. And so to those different audiences, the answer is, is going to be different. I would say in the general context, it's going to be underrated because I, I think that many people don't understand what they're capable of or have been pushed to a point to really understand what failure is within their training. And I'm not saying train to failure every single set. I'm saying one to three sets maybe per training session that you're getting there at at kind of a cap, right? That would be something that would be so beneficial for, for a lot of people to push to that point and to really see what they're capable of and see how strong they really are. I really don't have anything to add that mirrors my thoughts exactly. (laughs) So going on to another one, do you think country music is overrated or underrated? Because I'm going to vote that it's largely overrated. Um, I think that older country music is so much better than current country music. But I would also say that for a lot of different genres of music, that may mean that I'm getting old. And (laughs) so I'm going to say that current country music overrated. Wow. I'm going to need that clipped, boy. It's far too much like pop music, (laughs) but you also don't like banjo strumming. You don't really like- Well, I'm about to become a ukulele player, so it's (laughs) similar to the banjo. I don't know why ukulele, you're laughing so hard. I just thought it was a hilarious uh, you comparison. You don't think the banjo and the ukulele are pretty similar? I am not going to put my my hat into this <laughs> conversation because I have no idea. I mean, they're string instruments. Congratulations. So then a guitar. Would yeah. You say, guitar, okay. banjo, ukulele, all string instruments. I think that some of the instrument playing listeners would... <laughs> be offended that you're like the difference in playing all three of those i imagine oh there's a i'm not saying they're all the same i'm saying they're similar (laughs) (laughs) they're in the same camp they're literally all in the string instrument camp and i'm not even saying like oh violin violin. i'm not even saying something like a violin is similar because that's not the same thing what's another one is a cello the cello is a string instrument yeah so I mean, you're going to pull out the cello and the ukulele and be like, I can play both. They're basically the same. I mean, that's 0% what I was (laughs) saying anyway. So no, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Well, um, David, our (laughs) podcast producer, who is so dedicated to all of his new hobbies. (laughs) He is. Maybe he'll start playing the cello. He might. Uh, David plays, not plays, he now is an archer. He does archery. We had a... um, Monthly challenge with the staff. Yes. I was trying to think of the right terminology there. Monthly challenge to do a hobby that you've always wanted to do and never done. And his was archery. And I was like, you can change it because that is extra. I'm not going to make you go out and buy a bow for this challenge. And what did he do? He went out and bought a bow. And And a target. And (laughs) he got good at archery and literally hit a bullseye and just sent over the video. David is is such a fantastic human. And he (laughs) He he does not get overly excited in many scenarios. But when he had the opportunity (laughs) to show us the video of him shooting a bullseye with his new bow, and it was, I mean, it was amazing. It was incredible. It was amazing. He looked like a kid on Christmas. Like he was glowing. (laughs) And I was so happy for him. (laughs) (laughs) So coming soon is Sue with the ukulele. I just have to. Alex with the cello. (laughs) I got to chop my nails off for that. And I don't know if I'm ready for that yet because I I dig the nails. I think that cute nails are underrated. Uh, What about pickleball? Is this overrated or underrated? I actually saw a statistic the other day that pickleball was one of the largest insurance claims for injuries. (laughs) In 2022. (laughs) I did see that. You know, these people who have not done a whole lot of physical activity Uh discover pickleball and then they're, they're diving for balls. They're, uh, making hard cuts, tearing ACLs, tearing MCLs. I mean, putting their life on the line to excel at pickleball because it's the new hot thing. 
Um, I probably would have been in that statistic if I would have really gotten after it last year. I have, I have, uh, you know, full thoughts on that, that I would try to go full athletic mode, um, in doing it. But to answer your question of overrated or underrated, I would say that it's on the hype train right this moment. So I'm going to say overrated. Um, it's a, cool form of physical activity. It's easy to implement. Uh, You just need a tennis court. You don't even need a tennis court. I guess you could do it in your driveway with the net. If you had the net and then you had the paddles, the ball, and you're pretty much set. But I would say that uh, there will be a new fad um, sport for the layman adult to play in the future. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have any guesses? Um, No. Okay. What about Chipotle? So Chipotle five years ago, underrated, amazing. Couldn't get enough. Delicious. I mean, it was it was so good. Over uh, popularized version of Chipotle now, with whatever they're putting into their food, overrated. The chicken. I have not been to a Chipotle in the last year that has cooked the chicken well, not to the same extent that they used to. I don't know if it's different seasoned. I don't know if it's a different type of chicken that they're preparing. I don't know if the cooks have been advised to leave it on there till it burns and it turns to rubber. Or that it's undercooked. Or it's undercooked. Um, Chipotle is overrated at this time. And I hate to say it because if you go back and look at any of my old content, big Chipotle guy. Big Chipotle guy. Big Chipotle guy. Big Chipotle guy. I used to work at the vitamin shop, which was just a, I mean, a couple stores down from a yeah. Chipotle. And so I went to, to Chipotle during that time in my life religiously. Double protein always. Double protein, double rice. I mean, the bowl overflowing. Give me a tray because it's all going to fall <laughs> onto the tray. Um, that's the kind of life I used to live. But now I am a little repulsed by going there. It used to be of almost any time we saw a Chipotle, we would want to stop and get Chipotle. Mm-hmm. And there was a time five years ago that basically any time we went out to eat, it was like two Chipotle. And I really don't think I've even had Chipotle in the past two years. I've definitely had it, but it's not been good. I haven't had good Chipotle in the last two years. No, and there's not a reliable Chipotle around here. And then when we travel, you have no idea if it's reliable or not. So if you have a reliable, great Chipotle in your area, let me know. Because if I'm traveling, I would like some Chipotle, but I just am not willing to risk what it might be. So we often edge more towards Chick-fil-A. Okay, do you think lifting straps are overrated or underrated? I think that they are underrated in the context of body composition goals and improving for hypertrophy. Now, if you are going to be competing in a powerlifting competition, it's going to be extremely important for your grip strength to be at a at a very high priority. So I think that straps at that time are not going to be the best tool for you throughout the entirety of your training. But I think for the individual who's working to improve their body composition, it's very underrated for the sheer fact of, yes, your grip strength is important, but the amount of volume and and when you're doing a lot of pulling motions or you are performing lower body training that is utilizing dumbbells, things like RDLs, things like split squats, your grip strength is going to fail you at some point and your your glutes and your hamstrings and your quads are going to still have more left in the tank. And so with us speaking to training near failure, you're going to steal that window of intensity for the tissue that is your your goal to train because of your your grip strength and we don't want to allow that to happen. So utilizing the lifting straps or versa grips or whatever it is um, is a tremendous help and I think that Versa grips, the price deters a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I think they're like, I think they're more expensive now. I want to say like $75. Yeah, I think they're like $50 to $70. But I will say they do last, they last. for years yeah. and years. I've, I've had the, the, I think over the last 10 years, I've had three pairs. The first pair, I think I still have. Well, you use them until the Velcro started to get too worn out that like the loads that you were lifting were too heavy and you would be using them and the Velcro would come undone. Mm -hmm. And so then I used them for like three years because I wasn't lifting heavy enough loads for it to tear like that. And I used them and I, I 
pretty sure we still have them somewhere, but we did both get new ones. Yeah, and then I had a, the second pair I had was this camo pair that I lost. And then this, I have a, a blue pair now that I've had for at least three years. And they're in like perfect yeah. condition, you even though we use them all them. the time. Yeah. I'm a huge, huge fan of VersaGrips. Maybe they should, you know, have a little spot here. Uh, Essentia VersaGrips. Nash Hello. bars, Nash midday bars. squares. We're ready to promote you guys and give you guys a spot on this podcast. They're probably thinking, why would we give you money to do this when you're already doing it for free? That, you know, that's true. I'm going to stop talking about all those things. <laughs> but uh, I do love VersaGrips. And I was even using them today for my lower body session. And I used them yesterday for my back session. And they are are incredible chef's kiss. They they help me achieve my goals. So I'm all about it. How do you feel about the hip thrust? Do you think that's overrated or underrated? This one's hard. I'm going to say, and I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to offend some people, I think, but I'm going to say that they're overrated. And let me explain why I'm saying they're overrated, as I think that they're a beneficial part to your glute training. Do I think that they are the holy grail to growing your glutes? I do not. I think that there are other movements that I would put as a higher priority on the list of exercises that I need to do on a regular basis to grow my glutes um, than the hip thrust or glute bridge. I would probably put the RDL above it. I would probably put um, split squat variations above it. Um, those would be the two two exercises that I for sure would have above it, but it still would probably fall in an exercise that would in some form or fashion training in that fully hip extended position where the glutes are fully shortened is going to be part of a solid glute training program. But I do not believe that it is like the holy grail to glute training. I agree with you. So I don't really have anything to add, but do you think walks are overrated or underrated? And before you even answer, I'll let you know that they're largely underrated. Not enough people be out here walking. Walking is the best thing in the entire world. It can give you so many benefits and it's wonderful. I think that steps are greatly underrated. And I th I think that it's even further underrated what benefit having a step goal to everyone's day can have. I know that for my mom, if my mom is listening, this has been something that she and I have been working on and she has lost weight um, in doing so of just, it wasn't that she was shooting for 10K steps. It wasn't that she was shooting for 8K necessarily. We were just trying to have consistency to the steps that she was having and then trying to beat what she did the week prior. So we were getting the average, okay, this is what you had. Let's add a thousand steps to that. And that was really helpful for her to get more activity in and for her to feel more and more accomplished of like, okay, I did this, I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to keep doing it from there. And so I think that it's wildly underrated for people to track their steps and understanding how much activity they are or are not getting. I think this largely comes into place in a deficit of people will add on cardio, but not be tracking their steps. And then just inherently you move less when you have less food in place and you don't want to move as much and people will be adding cardio and there's not these big changes happening. And it's because really your steps were equated and there wasn't that much of a change in your overall output. So I think that steps are so helpful and they are underrated and expensive especially if you utilize them the best way. And by no means am I saying that you need to have 10K steps every day. It's really looking at, hey, somewhere between 6,000 to 10,000, where can we find a place that really works for you and your lifestyle to get that benefit? But I also love walks because there's such a time for me to have to reset. I often take a walk alone each day. And then I try to take a walk with Alex or with a friend. And it's so great to be able to just be there. We're, of course, not on our phones because it's inconvenient to honestly be on your phone on a walk. And we're just able to have some really great conversation, get in some movement, uh, and benefit ourselves and our, our quality time together. You want to know one more thing I feel like is underrated? What's that? You. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I, I take that over being overrated. I don't think you could be rated highly enough. Wow, that is so 10 kind out of, of 10 you. 10 would recommend. Wow, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I lied. One other thing that's also underrated. 
the physique development band tees that are coming out July 19th. Mark your calendars. Get on the email list. It'll be in the show notes so you can get first dibs on the new band tees. July 19th, July 19th, July 19th. Thank you guys so much for listening today, and we'll catch you in the next one.